Welcome back, everybody. I finally got one. You see it. I got a box of Icoria early. Uh, big shout out to Cars with Michael. He actually got me this one. He's got the Asian hookup over there, so he can get them from overseas where they've already been released. Uh, paid a lot more for this than I would for a regular box. <laughs> but it's worth it because I got it a few weeks early, so I can open it for you guys and we can check it out. And I'm very impatient anyway, so... It's kind of for me, too. <laughs> Let's break into it. I know a lot of other people have been opening them. Uh, especially Michael. He's opened several of these. But now I get to open one. So let's see what we get in here. Uh, the poles look really good. Plus, we got uh, the box stopper. This is gonna. This is really going to help this set age. Or at least the sealed boxes, anyway. Because, uh, yeah. Ultimate Masters would be worth like 200 bucks a box if it wasn't for the box topper. <laughs> so, but that box topper pumps it up there. We'll uh, put this guy back here. Put this over here. And we'll start breaking into this brand new set. I finally get to get my hands on some of these cards. Unfortunately, they're the Japanese packs, so they got the pull tab, which sucks. But hey, hopefully we don't damage too many tokens trying to open them this way. Good news about the Japanese style packs is we get through the packs pretty quick because token, land, oh, foil, a foil glimmer bell. I'm playing a lot with him in draft. I've been drafting him a lot on arena. Uh, he's actually a pretty handy little guy, the ability to untap him. Plus, there's lots of room for shenanigans with being able to untap a creature infinitely in the turn. So, our rare is Vivian, Monster's Advocate, first pack. First pack, Mythic, nice. I like that. Good way to start off the box. Hopefully that's a good sign. We got the Polywog Symbiote. That's the uh, the baby baby Godzilla, but his alternate form, which uh, I'm a little weirded out by all the variations. Dusk Fang Mentor, Parcel Beast. That's actually a really good card for, uh, for drafting and for mutate. There's our uncommons. We will kind of scroll through the commons real quick just to see. But these cards are like really faded looking. Maybe it's just because the colors are ramped up on Arena, but don't they look like really faded color wise? It's kind of funny. Um, anyways, what I was saying is there is a possibility for uh, the new like comic book style artwork cards, the alternate art, and the regular packs. So all over. So we got a human soldier token, wins card Craig for the land. And an emergent ultimatum. Man, these are like so faded. It looks like someone left them out in the sun. I mean, there's really no color on these at all. This is weird. So that's a rare. And then we got Ivy Elemental, Trumpeting Gnar, and Porky Parrot for the uncommons. What am I doing here? What has happened? Oh, yeah, that's right. The first pack had... Okay. My pals are a mess. Give me a second. Oh, man. That was a foil, that's why. I put the foil where the rare is supposed to be. Okay. I think I'm I think I'm back on track now here. <laughs> I think I figured out what I what I uh, did wrong there. All right, trumpeting are really fun for uh, mutate. Just popping out little three three beasties. And the porky parrot's pretty fun. Uh, built in ping, but you can ping them for as many times as mutated. Oh, see there you go, Volcap Volcap heat Yeah, yeah. First time trying to say these out loud. It's uh, not going as well as I had hoped so far. <laughs> So, I want to keep track of how many of the uh, alternate arcs we get. I keep trying to open these like American packs. Oops. Okay. Human Soldier again. Bloodfell Caves. And Yodoro. I like this guy. Um, I sponsored a couple collector's packs out of one of the boxes that uh, Cards with Michael opened. And he actually pulled me, I think, a, a extended art one of these in there. So... It wasn't so faded looking, though. Wow, I'm just shocked at how faded these look. It's, like, really throwing me off. Naturalized, lead the stampede. That's a fun little card. Uh, pouncing shore shark. Sharks with arms, just what you need. And any alternates? Nope, not in there. All right, let's keep digging through. I do like this set. I think it's got a lot of fun stuff in it. A lot of broken stuff, too. Mutate is a... Uh, Really proven to be a beast of a mechanic. Swell hole for the, I think that's uncommon, yep, uncommon uh, foil. And then a rare is, ooh, a boss. I like this guy. He's fun. Um, companion card. Uh, your starting deck contains only cards with odd converted mana costs and land cards. However, 
you notice it can be red or black, plus three. If a creature you control with an odd converted mana cost would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to that player or that permanent or player instead. So, yeah. Red and black decks are going to get a big old jump start with him. Uh, great card. Um, I forget what I was talking about because that's just how I am. <laughs> uh, any alternate art? Okay. I don't see any alternate arts in there. Um, yeah, I completely forgot what I was talking about. Jeez. Jeez, this color thing's like totally throwing me off here. I might remember later. Probably not. You guys will probably be laughing at me in the comments. That's fine. <laughs> Just like the video. You can laugh at me all you want. <laughs> Frontland Philidar. This is one I haven't seen a lot of yet. I don't know if he's just kind of difficult to pull on Arena or what. Oh, that's what I was going to talk about is Arena. Arena is screwed right now. Call of the Death Dweller. Charge of the Forever Beast. Footfall Creator. Cool little cycling card. And a sudden spinneret. And anything else in here? Nope. Okay. So this set totally screwed up Arena. I am livid with Arena right now because... Apparently, when you try to cast a spell that exiles a mutated creature, it doesn't work. Oh, look, our first token card. Nice. So this is the double-sided token card. We got Menace, First Strike, Hexproof, Lifelink, Reach, and plus one, plus one on the front. On the back, you get Flying, Trample, Death Touch, Flying, because you need two flying, Vigilance, and plus one, plus one on the back of that. So I guess plus one, plus one is the same on both sides. So it's, uh, it's Reach or Vigilance, Lifelink or Death Touch, which makes sense, Hexproof or Flying, Trample or Menace, and First Strike or Flying. So, pretty cool. I like the I like that they did the token cards for all the, uh, you know, obviously got all the new token stuff. Extinction Event, uh, this one's pretty neat. Choose Odd or Evening, exile each creature with converted mana cost of the chosen value. Zero is even. So, pretty cool. You can wipe out a whole board full of creatures selectively. These uh, these crystals, I actually think, uh, might see a little play. Uh, they're not bad. I've been using them in draft a lot. when Because I've actually drafted some three-color decks in, uh, in draft with the Ikoria. Because it's actually kind of possible. Uh, I like the fact they have cycling in case you don't need them. But they give you the three colors for three mana. It's not bad at all. Uh, I like them better than the Triomes. I actually don't like the Triomes at all, to be honest. Um, I think the Triomes are going to be the biggest flop in, in recent memory because they have the same lands in the Alara block, and nobody cares. They're not worth anything. Uh, the only difference is cycling, and cycling's, the cycling is three. If the cycling had been one on the new lands, I think they'd get a lot of play. But cycling a three just is too slow. Saltwater Cliffs, and speak of the devil, and he shall arrive. <laughs> there you go. This is probably going to be the most valuable of the Triomes because the, oh no, this is the blue, red, and green. I thought it was blue, red, and black. Okay. Blue, red, and black is probably going to be the most popular, or the most expensive. This one will probably be up there, though, because it's got blue and red in it. But yeah, there's your tri What did I do now? Oh, jeez, I keep messing up my piles. How are you guys letting me do this? This is all your guys' fault. I'm blaming you. That's not my fault. <laughs> All right, our our uh, our lockdowns are the uncommons. <laughs> our uncommons are the sanctuary lockdown, exuberant wolf bear, and the Xenoflare. flare. That that thing's annoying when you're playing against it. <laughs> it's uh yeah, a lot of these cycling decks are running those Xenoflares, flares, and it's just oh, wrecking shop. I've been playing a lot of cycling decks, not playing them, playing against them. They can get quite annoying quite quick. Not as annoying as Blue Control. Still the most annoying deck on the planet, but, you yeah, know, is what it is. All right, and next, uh, Foil. We're not getting a lot of Foils, I noticed. Uh, Ram Through, which is kind of a cool card. Uh, it's cool because it's uh, one of those fight cards, basically. Deals damage equal to its power. It's like a Rabid Bite, except if your creature has Trample, it deals the excess damage to the controller, which is awesome. So, good one. And I saw the peak of the next card. Did you guys see what it was? It's Zerda, one of the uh, more popular companions. Uh, pretty cool. Not too bad. Uh, it's either red or white, and two red or white hybrid, and one colorless companion. Each permanent card in your starting decks has an activated ability. That's pretty cool. 
Easy to build a deck around that. Uh, abilities you control that aren't mana abilities cost two less to activate. This effect can't reduce the mana uh, in that cost to less than one mana. And for one plus tap, target creature can't block this turn. So he's pretty handy. Good little rare. Reptilian Reflection. I used that in a couple of drafts. It actually is pretty effective. Uh, yeah. For cycling decks, this thing can be beastly. And it's the Sterics. The Sterics is a monster. That guy, uh, when you start getting him mutated a few times, uh, things get out of hand pretty quick. Uh, Primal Empathy. Uh, I keep trying to put the uncommons on top of the rares. Stop me from doing that. Yell at me next time I try it. Oh, finally, another alternate art. The Cavern Whisperer. Pretty cool. Just a common, but hey. They are good looking cards. I, I do like that fact that they got kind of more fun artwork on some of them. But I just think there's way, 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 way too many variants on this set. It's ridiculous. All right. We got the land. Skycast Sovereign is our rare. He's a uh, pretty fun little flying bird kitty. Um, Horn Bosch, Horn Bash Mentor, Sanctuary Smasher, and Flame Spill for the uncommons. Anything in the back? Nothing in the back. All right, moving on. So, what are you guys thinking of the set so far? Have you been drafting it on Arena, or have you gotten your hands on any of the cards yet? Are you having fun with it? What do you think the set's gonna do over time? I'm not even mentioning values in this video because there's no point. Genesis Ultimatum, so a rare. I'm gonna seize, this card is amazing. I can't believe it's not a rare. This card is awesome. Uh, I absolutely love this card. The fact that it's in blue, I mean, yeah, you get this out early game, which, you know, second turn. It's got cycling, but you'd be really dumb to throw this card away. <laughs> I mean, unless you're about to win the game next turn, you just need the card draw to do it, then uh, yeah, there's no reason to throw this card away. You get this early game, cast it. I have turned this thing into an 8-8 game winner more times than I can imagine uh, in just to draft on Arena. Necropanther, he's he's just brutal. And Frill, score, Frill Scare Mentor, he's pretty decent. So I keep trying to put the uncommons there. It's driving me up the wall. Um, <laughs> anyways, yeah, let me know what you've... Uh, what kind of uh, fun you've been having with them, what cards you like, what you think the set's going to do over time. Personally, I think it's going to age really well, especially the sealed boxes, because of the box toppers. It's going to be huge. Um, now, it probably won't be like Ultimate Masters Premium. Uh, Drenneth Magistrate, he's a fun card. Uh, stops your opponents from playing spells anywhere except their hands, which is awesome. Stops a lot of shenanigans there. Unbreakable Bond, Escape Protocol, and Grim Dancer are the Uncommons, which I actually put in the Uncommon pile this time. Did you see that? Did you see that? I'm getting better. I'm learning. Who can teach an old dog new tricks? All right, so <laughs> moving on here. So, yeah, I think it's going to age really well. Uh, I think the values are going to completely shift from what they are right now for the most part. I think the triomes are going to plummet. Oh, our foil rare is a fiend artisan. Um, is it artisan or artesian? I think it's artisan. Uh, I think artesian would have an extra eye in there somewhere. <laughs> so, a foil mythic, not bad at all. It's not a not a home run mythic, but it is a really good mythic. I think this card might uh, might see a little more play as it gets into it because it is a quick drop, and you get plus one plus one for each creature in your graveyard. Plus, you can sack a creature uh, to search your library for a creature card with a converted mana cost X or less and put it onto the battlefield. Then shuffle your library. Activate this ability anytime you could cast a sorcery. So I mean, this is just an amazing little card. I mean, you can search your library for any creature card that you can afford, plus plus the one hybrid, and put it onto the battlefield. Combo card city right here. I think this guy, I think this guy after, I don't know if it's gonna find a home before it cycles out, but once this cycles into like, you know, a, a modern legacy and, and vintage, uh, I think this thing's gonna be a, a beast of a card. This guy's awesome. Uh, Umari is our rare. Nice, another good companion. A uh, very popular one. Each non-land card in your starting deck shares a card type. So this is going to be awesome for uh, uh, tribal decks. When he enters the battlefield, choose a card type. Either creature or... Uh, yeah, whatever the other card types are. <laughs> Spells you cast to the chosen type cost one less to cast. You're most likely always going to do creature. Anyway, but <laughs> this guy's uh, pretty good. He's uh, He's already getting played a lot. 
And we got the Valiant Rescuer, Boon of the Wish Giver. And we got our first uh, alternate art uncommon, the Majestic Oricorn. So that's nice. And any commons? Nope. Okay. I do like the fact that you can get most of the variants in the standard boxes. So that's pretty cool. You can get the... Uh, I think you can get... Actually, is there any variants you can't get in the standard boxes? Aside from the the box topper versions, which you get the box topper. So I guess technically you can get every single variant in the boxes, regular boxes. General Kudro of Dreneth. This guy's uh, pretty popular, although nobody's building human decks yet. It's kind of funny. Nobody has actually been building the human decks around him that I've seen. Uh, I could be wrong. There could be people running them. I just haven't come across them on Arena yet. Um... Flourishing Fox, this guy can get really out of control in the cycling decks. Awesome little card. Great little uncommon. Uh, another one of the crystals. And then General's Enforcer to go with the General Kudro. Uh, that's kind of suspicious there. How'd they know that would be the rare in the pack? I don't know. Something fishy there. Oh, that's a mythic, by the way. Did I miss any other mythics? The colors are so weird on these cards. These Japanese cards are just, just like faded. Weird. Anyway, enough ranting about the colors. They're not shiny, pretty colors like I'm used to. Human Soldier, Basic Swamp, and another ultimatum, the Eerie Ultimatum this time. We got a Void Beckoner. So this is... <laughs> this is the other version, the other variation of the Space Godzilla, the famous one that everybody's way overpaying for, even though it's an uncommon in every single box. Um, <laughs> we might come across one in here. This is the variation of it, which I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a little unsure of how that's all supposed to work, really. I mean, can you stack four of these and four Space Godzilla? Because they got two different names? I don't know. Because the Space Godzilla you look underneath it has got Void, uh, the, the, Void Beckoner underneath it. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, this is the other variant of that. So, yeah, there's just so many variants in this set. Swallow Hole and another uncommon, the Huntmaster Legger, which is also a variant of one of the other cards. What's his name? Um, I forget it. I'll, it might come to me later, or I might pull it later. <laughs> and then we got our commons. So, so far we got two common of the extended art variants and two uncommon. So, but we only got four foils. I've noticed that the, uh, the token, the, the Japanese boxes, uh, the foreign boxes tend to, tend to have less foils than the, than the English box or the American boxes for some reason. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just, uh, and another ultimate. Maybe I'm just, uh, you know, coming to conclusions and I need a tinfoil hat or something, but I noticed when I did a lot of the, uh, the, the Japanese boxes on the first run of the last set, Theros. I noticed we didn't get quite as many foils in the boxes as we do in the regular ones. And then uh, I also noticed uh, in the Japanese War of the Spark boxes I opened, there was very few foils compared to the American War of the Spark boxes. So, anyways, Monster Step and Wingspan Mentor and Majestic Oricorn are uncommons. Uh, actually, there's a good, uh, we'll keep that on top there so I can show you this. See if there's any alternate arts. No alternate arts. So we did get the Majestic Oricorn in the extended art. So here's the difference between the two. Quite night and day different. Same creature, but totally different artists and totally different kind of concepts and everything. And you see they've got, like, on these, they're, they don't have all the explanations for the mutate and stuff. So it's quite a bit different, but same card. So, just variants all over the place in this set. <laughs> Way too many variants. <laughs> I mean, two variants of a card is plenty. Six, seven variants like they got in this set is kind of ridiculous. Especially when they've got different names. Yeah, we got a foil Sterix. That's nice. That's a foil that might actually be worth a buck and a half down the road. And then we got our Gem Razor extended. Nice. Uh, so, I was hoping to get one of these. I do like this guy. He's really cool. Um, reach and trample, and he's got mutate for only three, and it's in green where you got tons of ramp. Whenever this creature mutates, destroy target artifact or enchantment opponent controls. So, you know, with all the Theros stuff, obviously in the set right next to this, this is going to be a huge card for mutate because it takes care of all those enchantments and even some troublesome artifacts. So, 
That's a great hit. I like the fact that we got that one. We're gonna put that up there in our alternate art pile. And then we got our Titanus Rex, which is a, again one of the alternates of one of the uh, the, the Godzilla cards. This guy's fun. Eleven, eleven. I was actually able to. I, I did a one of the the drafts a couple nights ago. One of the actual uh, booster drafts, the live ones where you're where you're playing other players, and. <laughs> <laughs> I drafted this because the cycling, because I was I was doing a lot of cycling, and it ended up getting late game. Me and the other guy just kept blowing up everything that the other person put on the board, and we ended up just kind of stalling out. In late game, I managed to hard cast this thing, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I won the game. You hard cast this thing, and you don't win something wrong. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Boneyard Lurker, another uncommon. And this one's a good one, too. Uh, whenever you mutates, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. So get something back then proud wild bonder this guy can be uh can be pretty annoying to play against good little uncommon there's some really good cards on the set i really like the set um i think obviously like we say with every set it could have been done a little better but i think really the biggest problem with in my opinion is the triomes the fact they come into play tapped there's no way to put them into play untapped if they'd have made so instead of cycling, if it had been pay three life to put to, to come into play untapped, I think those would be like worth the money that they're actually going for right now or that people are wanting for them right now because I think those would be amazing cards. If they were three life shock lands that gave you three colors, I'd totally be down for that. All right, next up, uh, Hunted Nightmare. I better speed it along here. I'm yapping and not opening. This guy is awesome. He's got Menace, he enters the battlefield, target opponent puts a death touch counter on a creature they control. But if they only got one creature, doesn't matter, you can't block with it. And he's three for a four or five, so he's a lot of fun. Um, time will tell. I, I have a feeling it's going to not hold value because of the fact that it's uh, it gives your opponent a, a boost. But yeah, I think a lot of people are going to probably prefer other cards in their deck. There's just so many cards to choose from. Reconnaissance mission's pretty cool, a little costly. If it was uh, two blue and one, it might be a little better. Um, but it's still a good card. We'll see. Will of the All Hunter, Cheatering Harvester, another good one. Because uh, this one makes your opponent sacrifice a creature every time it mutates. So that guy's awesome. A little expensive, though. So I don't know how much play he's going to get just because he's so pricey. Anyways, let's get moving along here. We're only halfway through the box. <laughs> We're 21 minutes in, 22 minutes in. Wow. Another token card, Jungle Hollow. Hey, hey, a foil rare and a foil mythic. Nice. We got the myth, Mythos of Nethroi. I love this card. This, you know, three mana, destroy target, non-land permanent if it's a creature. If you just happen to have green and white in the casting cost, you can destroy any permanent, but when's that going to happen? And then a Vadrox, Apex of Thunder, or Vadrock, Apex of Thunder. Great card. Another mythic with the alternate art. Great pull. Uh, I like that. So we'll put that in our alternate art pile there. Or should we put it in the mythic pile? Oh. <laughs> Anyways, we got another crystal, the alert heat bonder, and the heartless act, and evolving wilds. You gotta have the evolving wilds. Evolving wilds, a great card. <laughs> Wizards all like, we don't want to reprint Fetchlands because it slows down the game because everybody's gonna be searching their library. <clears throat> Anyways. I don't want to get into rant. I think I've, I think I've ranted about that in like the last three videos, so I'll spare you guys this one. <laughs> oh, a companion uh, token. That's pretty cool. Uh, I don't haven't seen very many of those yet. Uh oh, you guys will let me mess up my piles again. I'm putting lands on top of the. Uh, God, oh, now everything's a mess. This video is gonna be like an hour long. You guys aren't gonna watch this. <laughs> All right, there's our land. Oh, and the Lutri. He's he's already banned in pretty much every format. <laughs> or at least one. So, Lutri is a great card. Uh, Easy Prey is a pretty good one. I like the fact that it's got cycling for the same cost as the mana cost. Because uh, later game, you won't need it. So, that card draw is going to be helpful. Uh, Crystal and the Cunning Night Bonder. This this thing's been pretty annoying. I've been playing that a lot. A lot of people have been playing that against me in Arena. All right. So, again, uh, just want to kind of... Give a shout out to Cards with Michael for getting me this box. Uh, it's really awesome. Uh, nice that he didn't keep them all to himself. <laughs> uh, Foil Island and a Song of Creation. That one's uh, that one. I'm kind of I'm on the fence of. Everybody was like, it's broken before it came out, but now I'm like, 
I don't know. I don't see a lot of people using it. I, I drafted it and decided not to stack it in the deck because I just didn't think it was going to be uh, uh, as helpful as it needed to be for the particular deck it was running. Anyways, Bastion of Remembrance. Cool card. Primal Empathy. Splendor Mare. And then our commons. Nope, we got another one. Cloud Piercer. There we go. Another alternate art. So... What do you guys think of the variants in this set? Do you think there's way too many like me? Or do you like having all these different variants and different options? I mean, options are good, but it's like, I think it's a little too much. Mythos of Snapdax, another Mythos card for the rare. Barrier Breach, Zagoth Mamba. That one, uh, that one's a great, great card for, uh, it doesn't mutate itself, but if you mutate anything onto it, it's a one drop, one, one. So it's first turn, drop. And then uh, you mutate something onto it, like turn two or three, and you start killing your opponent's creatures every time you mutate. So that's awesome. We got a Glowstone Recluse uh, alternate art here. Uh, Raking Claws, that thing can be uh, pretty brutal. I got beat with that thing the other day uh, against somebody in one of the drafts. Uh, yeah, double strike when you're uh, only expecting five damage to come over and you got ten life. You're like, oh, I'm good. And then all of a sudden they throw that thing out and then you're dead. And you're like, hmm, that wasn't fun. <laughs> and a Triome. Oh, so this is probably going to be the most expensive one because it's black, green, and blue. Simic and black. Yeah. That one's probably going to be the most valuable one, but I really just... That cycling for three just kills it for me. Mystic Subduel, Sonorous Howlbonder, and Grim Dancer. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think the, the cycle cost is enough to destroy the value on those, or do you think it's just fine? I mean, are you going to... Do you like the trials? You're gonna stack them? I mean, I don't know. In a three-color deck, maybe. But oh, we got a foil alternate art, the Lord Dracus. That's nice. And then another mythos, the mythos of Brokos. Mythos of Brokos. Sounds like a sounds like a kind of goofy rap song. Momentum Rumbler, Avian Oddity, and Regal Leosaur are the young commons. And nothing in the back. All right, two stacks down. This is the last of the second stack here. Try not to make this an hour-long video. I just I just love talking about this game. Bonders Enclave, that one's a pretty cool card. I think that's going to see a lot of play down the road. Because uh, it's, uh, you know, three to draw a card if you control a creature with power four or greater. That's a, that's a really good... It's a really good ability for a, for a non-basic land. And it's, it, get, it doesn't come into play tapped. You know, that's huge for me. So... I think that one's going to be, that one's probably going to stand the test of time a little bit. Weaponize the monsters. I cannot get that one to work. I tried it in a couple drafts. It's worthless to me. Let me know if you can figure out how to get that one working. So by Thundermane, Skull Prophet. Pretty gold card. Um, and Mana Elves. I always love Mana Elves. Any, any little critter that you can drop on the first or second turn that can give you free mana. All about it, because I like to get the big old beasties out as fast as possible. The faster I can get a big creature out, the happier I am. Migratory Greyhorn, great common, because that lets you ramp up really quick by mutating, and it's a 3-4, and the mutate's only 3, so awesome card. Um, Shark Typhoon. <laughs> Sharknado. That's right, they actually made a Sharknado. Crystal, fight is one. Another Zenith Flare. And those in the back. So that's nice. The Zenith Flare is not one of the uh, hard to get uncommons by the looks of it. Uh, so they, they do put different numbers of uncommons on the uncommon sheets and rares on the rare sheets and stuff. So it's it's nice when you see multiple of the same uncommon in a box that's actually a playable uncommon like the Zenith Flare. Cub Warden is a rare because that means they didn't nerf it uh, because they didn't, they didn't think it was going to be as powerful or they just didn't care. I don't know. Boon of the Wish Giver. Clash of Titans, an Insatiable Hemophage. That one's a cool one. Uh, it's uh, basically a, it's a Gary. Whenever it mutates, each opponent loses X life, and you gain X life, or X is the number of times this creature is mutated, but it's got Death Touch on it, and it's only three for a 3-3 three, three with Death Touch. That's good on its own, and then, you know, it give, it deals one damage the first time you, you mutate it, and then every time after that, it keeps dealing more and more damage, so... I really like that one. I think that's a great card. A Baldy Models. Look, fetch land in a standard set. Watsy. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I swear. All right. Last stack. Getting through it here. So you got about 10 packs to go. 
Because I hope these packs are such a pain to open. <laughs> Plus we see and Kahira, one of the other companions that everybody's using. So that's, uh, yeah, you probably already seen it. I'm not going to worry about it. And another Void Beckoner. IBL Mill and Dire Tactics are uncommons. Anything in the book? Yep, we do. We got a Cavern Whisperer, another one. There we go. I'm trying to open these a little faster. I need to get better at that. I just enjoy chatting about the game. Oh, nice. A second foil rare, and it's a good one. The Lava Brink Venture. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, choose odd or even. Zero is even. Lava Brink Venture has protection from each converted mana cost of the chosen value. That is amazing. So, you got two of these out. One's odd, one's even. You can, <laughs> you can block anything. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. So, two foil rares in the box and a foil mythic. That is awesome. Quartzwood Crasher is our, uh, our uh, uh, rare. Yeah, I can talk. And uh, this one's pretty brutal. It can it can win games. You got it. You, if you're running wide on that thing and you get them out there, yeah, it can it can get pretty out of hand. Uh, we got Dustfang Mentor, Blitz of the Thunder Raptor, and another Cunning Night Bonder. Any other alternates? Nope. Okay. All right. Dogen Land and Full Art Trial. <laughs> Yep, everybody else is excited to get them. I'm like, oh, thanks for relaxing down. Escape protocol and another alternate art, auspicious sterics. That's a good one. I'm actually more excited about the uncommon than I am about the, the rear land. <laughs> I don't know. Not that I'm uh, not that I'm gonna just give away all those triumphs. Obviously, any rare land cycle, I uh, I do tend to hold on to because. Odds are they might be worth something down the road. Garuda, one of my favorites. Possibly my favorite most broken card in the whole set. This guy is just insane. Um, if you build the deck around him, he's nuts. I actually I got him in the draft I did last night on Arena. <laughs> I actually pulled him in one of the packs. And uh, I think he's my third pack, and I was actually already running blue. So I was like, yes. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't do that good in draft because you're most likely going to get some pretty weak creatures, but uh, it was still fun. I mean, I got him out a few times, and pretty much, I think only one time I got him out, I lost the game. I mean, most of the games I pulled him out in, I, I won, because once he hits the board, it's just beast. I love that card. I think that's going to be one of the top cards in the set once everything calms down. Stormwild Caprador. Hornbass Mentor, and another Necropanther. That's nice. I do love the Necropanther. It's a pretty big set, but we're seeing a lot of duplication in here, which is nice. And Dreamtail Heron, another uh, extended art. One of the alternate arts there. Yeah, I'm trying to open them fast, I swear. And Token Island, and another Mythos. I think we got all the Mythos. So I'll have to go back and look at the end of the video, but I think we got every Mythos. Unbreakable Bond, Ominous Seas. Love that card. Uh, Jubilant Skybonder. If you're running blue and you're drafting and you get that in a pack, take that. If it's your first pack and you get that, take that, run blue. <laughs> that will win you games, I promise. If you can get it to live long enough. <laughs> that is, as long as somebody else doesn't kill it. <laughs> More tokens. Land. Uh, foil. Uh, rooting Moloch. And I think I saw another triumph. Yep, another triumph. <sighs> a lot of triumphs. That Reptilian Reflection's fun. I already talked about him, though, so I'll spare you the second lecture on him. <laughs> oh, got a Migratory Great Horn for yet another alternate art. And how many have we got left? Four more packs. We're almost there, guys. Hold on. Hold on. I know you got stuff to do, and I got people to see and places to go. Oh, wait. I guess you probably don't. <laughs> Land. Classification. So good. So, uh... I saw Joey's classification deck, and I was like, wow, I only need, like, uh, three or four wild cards to build that deck. It is a pretty cheap deck, and it looks like tons of fun, because I love just memeish, goofy combos like this. So I built the deck on Arena, and I tweaked it a little bit. His had blue in it, and I didn't like the blue, so I took the blue out and just made it straight red and green and modified it a little bit, and I've got it going pretty fast. <laughs> it's pretty stupid. Uh, it's one of those you either, you either lose real bad or you just win gloriously type decks. It's hilarious. That card is so much fun. Um, 
I'll, uh, I'll do a video on it, hopefully, once I get the video figured out. I, I tried to do some arena videos, but the audio's messed up on it. I, I can't figure out what the problem is, so I'm still working on it. I'll do some arena videos with some of the decks I've built on there. They're, they're just goofy. They're fun. But they do win. Uh, Exuberant Wolf Bear, Valiant Rescuer, and back for more. And a fetch land in a standard set. All right, I'll stop. Probably not. I'm probably going to do that every time I see one for the rest of my life now. <laughs> Why you just made me angry with that? The fact that I fell for that excuse at first was the part that made me really angry. Checkpoint Officer Foil. That guy can be annoying. Ozolith! Yay! One of my favorite cards in the set. This thing is so good, and it's only one mana. Uh, I actually had a counter deck where I was all the creature were building up massive counters with, of course, uh, the... Oh, yeah. I can't ever think of card names when I'm doing videos. Uh, the enchantment that uh, doubles the counters every turn. Yeah, that one. Um, so I already had one of those decks built, and this just fit so nice into it. So, And i actually been pulling a bunch of these in the packs I've been opening on Arena, and I've drafted a couple. So I've almost got a place out of them already on Arena. And I don't actually buy anything in Arena. Charge of the Forever Beast, Football Crater, and Lord Drakus the Regular Art. We got one of the extended arts already. Um, yeah, I don't pay money on Arena, so I don't have a lot of stuff on there. I've only got, only got a few decks that are actually like competitive decks built so far. Just because I don't have a lot of wild cards because I don't spend money. I don't buy anything. I bought uh, the original, what was it, $5 pack and then the the $10 pack or whatever it was. Or Hey, a regular Fiend Artesian. So we got another Mythic in here. That's nice. Cool. So we got two of those in the same box. We got the foil and the regular. Uh, Sanctuary Smasher, Migration Path. That card's really cool with the cycling especially. A little expensive, though. And Archipelago. Uh, I was hoping I'd get one of these because I've been watching so many of these box opening videos, and I have yet to see a single YouTuber actually know how to pronounce that. It's Archipelago. Just so you know. Archipelago. Like Archipelago, but gore. Archipelago. Archipelago. Say it with me slow. Arca no, okay, I'm done. <laughs> oh... Little, little things like that just kind of, like, every time I hear a YouTuber mispronounce that, I'm like, it just brings a skin crawl. <laughs> All right, last pack. What do you think should be in here? Oh, we got the box toppers too. I almost forgot about the box topper. I meant to open that about two-thirds of the way through, but forgot because I don't remember anything. Titan's Nest. I'm old. I started playing the day revised dropped and I was 18. That's how old I am. Rooting Moloch. Flame Spill. Spite, Sprite Dragon. And do we get any alternates on the back? We do not. All right, what do you think it is, guys? What do you think it is? What could it be? Let's try and open it without ruining the card. Yeah. All right, which side are we on here? Okay, that's the back. We're going back first. Nobody make any comments about that. I, I, can, I can feel what you're thinking. What is it? It is... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah the card i've been telling everybody do not overpay for this thing because as you can see every box i've seen opened with uh, except for i think maybe i'm up to like three boxes now now i've watched probably 40 or 50 box openings regular and collector's boxes uh with the exception of maybe three every single one's had one of these in it uh maybe not a foil some of the collector's boxes just have the non-foil, but I've never seen, I've only seen like one or two collector's boxes not have either the foil or the non-foil. And uh, I've never seen, a, a, or all the standard boxes I've seen, most of them had the non-foil at least in it. Uh, so yeah, don't spend money on this card. Not the kind of money that they're asking for. Uh, all these first print run boxes, which is, Hundreds of thousands have this card in them. As you can see right in front of you, that is the foil Space Godzilla DC. Right there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll put this on eBay tonight. <laughs> so there you have it. There was our box topper. Let's see what we got because we got some really good stuff. Uh, I do want to make sure I didn't miss any mythics and I wanted to check for the, the mythoses. I think we got all the mythoses real quick. Um... Of course, I, don't, I, I should probably look at the logos so I can actually <laughs> read them <laughs> instead of guessing. It's probably the smart way to do it. Yep, there's the green. There's the white. God, we got a ton of ultimatums, too. Holy cow. And a ton of triumphs. 
Wait, did I miss the black one? No, I think it was the first one, wasn't it? Where was it? Did I miss it? Oh, it was foil. That's right. We got the black foil one. So I guess the, the, okay. So we got all of them except the blue. All right. Uh, triumphs. Let's check the triumphs real quick. Why not? You guys are probably all long gone by now and just talking to myself anyway. So, ah, uh, dropping stuff. All right. So we got three regular triumphs and then we got the one extended art triumph. So our mythics were Vivian, first pack, which is awesome. General, Kudro, which is awesome. Fiend Artesian, which is awesome. And then we got the, there's the other Triome. So we got four Triomes in the box. And then we got the, the Vadrock was our other mythic. Uh, we got the Gem Razor in here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, wow. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So we literally got an entire booster pack of alternate arts in the box. <laughs> uh, but three of them are rare. Uh, we got three rares, a mythic, and a bunch of uncommons. So it's a really good booster pack. Mythic, oh, two rares, and one, two, three, four, five, six uncommons. So that's a great booster pack, but yeah, we got exactly a booster pack worth of the alternate arts. So four mythic, oh, five mythic box, because we got the, uh, the Fiend Artesian foil as well. Artisan? Artesian? What is it? You let me know. I can't decide. Oh, there's a, oh, there's a foil alternate art too, so I guess technically another one. So there's the Black Mythos. Um, there's the Fiend Artesian. Artisan? Artisan? Artesian? I don't know. I can't decide. I think it's Artisan because I think there would be Artesian, I think, has an I after the S. So we got our Mythic Foil. So we did end up with five foils in the box, or five foils, five Mythics in the box, one of which was Foil. Um, we got almost all the, my the Mythos cards. And we got the Lava Brink as our other rare. So we did get two rares, um, uh, yeah, two rares and uh, Mythic in the foil. So great box. Um, as far as I can tell, it's the first one I've opened, but it looks like a great box from all the ones I've seen opened. And of course, we got the ultimate box topper. <laughs> it's only an uncommon, people. See, gray. See, you. It's an uncommon. They're going to be in all of them. They're going to be everywhere. Anyways, it is a pretty card, though. I do like it. Uh, I'll probably just hold on to it, even though I can... The reason I'm going to hold on to it is because if I sell it to somebody, I'm going to feel bad when it drops down to like five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and they're probably gonna be mad at me. This car ripped me off for like a hundred dollars on this card that's only worth five bucks now because it's an uncommon. So yeah, it's a pretty card. I love Godzilla, and I just don't want it. The backlash. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> so I'll probably hold on to it. I know this is a super long video, guys. I really appreciate you sit sticking around. If you stuck around this long, I doubt you did, but I really hope you did. And uh, because the box toppers classic. Um, I had this. Two minutes of this video is me laughing about that. Anyways, hopefully you'll check out a couple more while you're here. I really appreciate every view and like and sub and share. It means the world to me, you guys. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. You guys have a great night, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.